Native Americans. This is our land. We know the battles of Millersville. We know when it took, when they exchanged hands. We have the documents, the deeds, and the treaties to prove who we are. Certain people there know where we're coming from. The small-minded have no clue what's really going on. They think a group of people just moved down here with a radical religion. Other people understand that Bush put into effect the indigenous law from 1992 to the year 2000. And the indigenous people then have the right to step forth. Our relatives up in the Ma up in Massachusetts, called the Massachusetts Indians or the Pico Indians, have already fought up there and we got our rights. Out in the plains, we just fought out there. And now they had to bring in 10,000 bison or they had to put the buffalo back in the plains because we won out there. You follow? And they're going to have to learn to accept that we are here, we are the Native Americans, there's a difference between a Native American and an American Indian. Get that to your head. A Native American, uh, uh, you people with dark skin and woolly hair. An American Indian are those people who were here, came in when Ho Chinese came over here, and that's why the strongest stronghold of China and the oldest population of China anywhere outside of Asia is in California. Because they migrated over here, and when they stiffed us, they became what you see today as American Indians. If you look at any American Indian, you're looking at an African and a Chinese mix. Then later, East Indians moved across the Barren Strait and came down and mixed in again and produced what you see today with two brains. We are the indigenous people, it's on record, the descriptions are on record, we still we have all the paperwork in place. So there are people there that realize the reality of what day and time they're in. I'm not interested in your emancipation proclamations, I'm not interested in your reparations, you can't pay me for what you did to my people. You can't pay us, and I'm not talking, and I'm not talking about black people. When we was on the Trail of Tears, we were all mixed up. We were racist, all mixed up. They came down on everybody that got involved. You understand? You had an aristocratic family that came out of Ireland, came out of Britain, came out of France, that was trying to take the wealth of this country. You know what I'm trying to say? And so we are at a point now where we have rights. Not rights we ask for. There's a word called autonomy. There's a thing called indigenous, sovereign. All of those things are in and we just never use them because of fools like Farrakhan who keep directing us in the directions of Saudi Arabia or to that fool Gaddafi. We have fools who keep on pulling us away from reality. Got to make you think you're an African. So you don't realize that you're all Native Americans and that you were already here. Not that, not that nobody here didn't come from Africa. Yeah, there was an African slave trade, but not everybody here is from Africa. Y'all, the different tribes was already on the shore when Christopher Columbus came but didn't step on the land. Your father and sent in Peter Negreto to speak to the people and sent in Yahuda, a Jew spoke Aramic and Arabic to speak to the people who they met when they stepped on the shore. When it was when they came here, the people were speaking Arabic. You can check the history of Ben York, find out his father's brother's name was Jupa. They have it on record in Tennessee. Jupa. Jupa is a Moorish word meaning well. His sister's name was Nancy. My grandfather's sister. We have the deeds, the records, the proof, where they went, where they traveled, and how they say they never freed Ben York. And we, Lewis did free Ben York. And we also got the deed to show that you as Moors do not fall under Jim Crow law. You do not fall under Negro law. You do not fall under the Emancipation Proclamation law. You have nothing to do with any of the laws that there are bills or rights that they're passing for Negroes. It has nothing to do with you. You lose it when you become a Christian. You lose it when you become an Israelite. You lose it when you become a Mohammedan. Because then you fall from fact into fiction. There's no historical facts anywhere that there ever was a man named Jesus 2,000 years ago. There's no facts. And they will take you back to the Talmud and say that's a fact, and that's not a fact. There's no proof. So when you start aligning yourself with fictions, then you can't claim your sovereignty. When you give people facts, and listen, I understand Christianity is a very beautiful thing if it's practiced properly. It's a nice organization. Your father, but it has no origin with facts. It's just like the Boy Scouts of America. The Boy Scouts of America exists for 2,000 years. It might become a religion. In fact, John Coltrane and Elvis Presley have been declared religions this year. 
That's a fact. And uh, you better bet Jimi Hendrix will be a religion in a couple more years. And 2,000 years from now, Elvis Presley will become a Jesus Christ. And that would be attributing miracles to him and all the things that you cannot prove. You with me? But when it comes down to talking to people straight up, eye to eye, go straight up, deal with the facts. You got to give them back all the crap. Islam, Christianity, Judaism is all part of the crap. I'm not telling you not to believe that there's a spiritual savior that's not going to... If you need that kind of stuff, if you're, if you're an anticipator, if you're an... <laughs> You like to sit around and anticipate the miracle instead of making it happen when well, you keep sitting and anticipating it. If you're an expector, if you're like the Muslims who is expecting the Mahdi, or the Christians that's expecting Jesus, or the Jews that's expecting the Messiah, if you want to sit around expecting when you better and when you can get up and make it happen yourself, then you keep on inspecting. But the Wapo ain't gonna be doing that with you. We stopped waiting. We stopped believing. You know what I mean by that? You had us believing a lot of crap that didn't happen. Yeah, my great grandmother and everybody believing Jesus was going to come, and on those presents, they took the abuse. They didn't bother to look any further. The key is a belief system. You understand that? A belief system. If I can get you trapped in a belief system, then I can get you to believe anything about anybody. The moment you give back a belief system for facts, then when they say, well, Elijah Muhammad had sex with all of his secretaries, you want facts. I don't want to hear that. I, don't, I want you to put, give me some facts, prove it. You know what I'm saying? When you're Jimmy Swag and so-and-so, I want proof. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Jesus died on the cross for your sins. Give me some proof. It's in the Bible. Not that. You all wrote that. Give me some proof. I want to hear it from another organization or another denomination of people that existed beside them. I don't want to hear the Muslims' interpretation of Muhammad. That was 1,400 years ago. Give me another group of people who were living 1,400 years ago who were literate, and I want to hear them tell me the story of Muhammad, his miracles. Why is it that you can't find nobody else on the planet verifying Jesus' miracles but those who believe in him? Quite simply because you can make up anything amongst your own family, about your relatives, especially if it's going to become internationally profitable and give you the power to tell anybody to turn the cheek while you slap the hell out of them. That's a very convenient doctrine. And we believed it. We took the abuse through, through the kidnapping, which they call slavery, and I repeat for all the new folks here, stop calling it slavery. The reason why I say don't call it slavery is because you cannot petition the international courts for the torture and abuse if you keep referring to it as something like slavery, Slavic. You have to refer to it as I was kidnapped. Stop calling it police brutality. It's called torture. That can be found on documents. Police brutality is not on documents. Torture is. Physical abuse over an extended period of time is called torture. What just happened to that young man in New York City, the Haitian brother, is torture. Did anybody, did anybody here miss what they did last week? Well, I'm not going to repeat it. That's how disgusting it is. You follow? And they got fired. They should have got set on fire. If this was according to no, if this was according to their own evil periods, these police officers would have been set on fire for the for the, the sodomy acts that they performed on this this individual in the police department in New York City. He would have been best, but that's what fire means. Set on fire. You follow? But that's called torture. Rodney King was not a product of police brutality. That's why he lost it. He should have petitioned through the people, the indigenous people of the world, international courts in Geneva, under torture. And everybody saw him being tortured. You understand? There's no such thing as resisting arrest. There's no law as resisting arrest. They created it. And that's why whenever you get arrested for resisting arrest, they always drop it. You've got to start studying the law. You got to overstand their law versus your rights. 
not the rights they give you. They can't give you anything because you were here first. You with me? You ain't got to claim nothing. It's already yours. And there's international courts in Geneva, in Belgium, people who are waiting because they know what happened. And they got records and they got deeds. And your people all over this planet right now are claiming through international, not here, their rights and getting it. The word is autonomy. You don't have to petition. You are who you are. You have to prove to me I'm an African. I don't have to prove to you I'm not a Moor. You have to prove to me I'm an African from Nigeria. That I fall up under that. You can't do that. You can't check my blood and do it. You can't check my hair texture, my skin texture, or my, my features and prove it. You follow? Because when I reach out and I grab my family, which is Latino speaking people, South America, Central America, North America, and all through the Caribbean pull us back and say, this, this is who we are. You can't tell me that all my brothers and sisters in Puerto Rico are Africans and are part of the slave trade. They won't fall under your characteristic assignments. You with me? You won't be able to do that. And the greatest fear is the awareness of the laws that govern you. But you have your own constitution. He has no idea how long we as Native Americans have been waiting to make this claim. They just don't know. We had to wait for the information, the Freedom of Information Act to be passed in order to go to Washington and into the archives and pull out our community. They thought we just were sitting around scratching our heads and listening to hip hop music. Not all of us, some of us were waiting. I'm a grandson of Ben York, and I know what he did, how he was received, and how he was, and how he was treated. You follow? So it may not have touched you as much as it touched me. You follow that? But I followed the whole history straight on through, name by name, person by person, every event. I know, I want to know why educated Frenchmen had to use Africans, as they call us, to translate for them. I want to know why, if I was in Virginia, and I was supposed to be butt dumb, did you need me to take you all through this country and show you to find the waterways? If I was restricted from slavery to, uh, or confined as a slave in a certain environment, how did Ben York know all about the country? How did Ben York speak every dialect of every Native American tribe here? How did Ben York have children amongst the Oseg, the Mandan, the Seminole, the Shinnecock, the Shoshone? How did he manage to have um, children amongst every one of these tribes? And anytime you see anybody who's a Nispears, this, and they write this in their own books, Nispears means nose pierced. Sound familiar, Ansars? It was a symbol of the descendants of Ben York who were black Native Americans. And to this very day, they still exist. It's just about waiting for the key moment when, the, when nature will realign itself and make a way for us not to be as abusive to them as they were to us. My forte is give me what's mine. That's all. And just leave me alone. If you can't live with me in peace, then leave me alone. If we can't get along, you leave me alone. I can survive without you. I survived here before you got here. I can survive without you, your man-made niggas. I can survive without them too. You follow what I'm saying? Meanwhile, the paperwork is in Geneva. And the telegram came back that it's already been approved because they can't disapprove it. That's why you got that little newspaper in your hand. That newspaper was to put the family chart out there so you know what you're talking about. And the next newspaper will have a little more information. And each newspaper is going to have a little more information. It's free. Take it, study it, and be able to defend yourself. You follow? You know, there's a, one more thing. You know, there's a big uh, cult, a tremendous cult with thousands of cult members in Atlanta right now. Did y'all know that? They are taking over Atlanta. This, this cult right here, see this cult? This cult, they're called the, uh, the Ancient Arabic Order of the Noble Mystic Shrine. This cult, 
There's thousands of them all over Atlanta right now. I'm saying that because we're registered in the state of Georgia as a fraternity, and they refer to us as a cult. So the shrine is a fraternity, and they wear feathers with crests and stars on it, and they say, Assalamu alaikum, and they wear Arab clothes, and they identify with Arabia and Fez in Morocco. So they also must be a cult. Now I'll tell you the truth. Cult busters are bored because the 60s are gone. And they built offices and they used to go around kidnapping people who were joining the Hare Krishnas and different groups and hold them in rooms and detox them with their philosophy of Christianity. Now they're bored. So they'll have nobody else, so they're going to now turn on fraternities and start saying fraternities are cults. That's what cult busters have to do in order to keep their rent paid. They become the, the vicars of the Middle Ages who went out looking for witches. And when they ran out of what they thought were witches, anybody who said something that sound witchy, they tarred and feathered them or burnt them. They had a dad the dassy to float a piece of wood in the water and then put the witch on it. And if the wood sunk, she was a witch. You understand? Then they took out and burnt her on a, at a stake. That's the day and time you're getting into now. That's how insecure people are becoming because you're fed up. And they want you to react like Farrakhan. They want us to run over to Olivia and align ourselves with some fanatic terrorist fool like Gaddafi. I know and you know something that they don't seem to recognize. If Farrakhan has been recently accepted by the Muslim world, correct? I know and you know that's crap. We know it because one of the schools in our fraternity and sorority is the study of Islam. That's one of the degrees we study thoroughly in Arabic. Am I right? Now, Farrakhan believes Allah is a man who came in the year 1930 named W.D. Farad, a human being. The Muslim world believes Allah is ghaybi, as they say in Arabic, unseen, conflict. The Muslim world believes the last prophet was a man named Mustafa Muhammad Al-Amin who died in the year 632 in Arabia. Farrakhan believes that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is the final messenger and the Muhammad of their Quran of 1400 years ago. Conflict. Muslims fast Ramadan, the season changes. Farrakhan's followers fast Ramadan in December. Conflict. Muslims prostrate in prayer. Farrakhan's followers stand up in prayer. Conflict. The beard in Islam is called Sunnah. Muslims must wear it. The nation of Islam does not wear it. Conflict. You understand what I'm saying? There's no way the Arab world could accept Farrakhan as an imam or their brother without some underhanded, slimy con game going on. But America... Basic America sees the word Mohammedan or Muslim and don't have a clue because they don't bother studying other things because their Christian ministers are so intimidated by the possibility that their congregation might find the truth. They tell you, don't read that, don't read that. Those are heathens, those are blasphemers. They got all these screams and they're closing the minds of people. And now when something like that happens, the general public cannot see there's something going on. Something for us to worry about. I'm going to tell you why it's something for us to worry about. Because when word of D. Muhammad, the son of Elijah Muhammad, defected from the nation of Islam and formed this world community and joined them in with the Arab world, you know what he did? He took thousands of black Americans and gave them into the hands of a new breed of communism or terrorism called Islam. Now we can't tell where the bombs are coming from. Because any, any American can be souped up into believing that he's doing something in the name of the law and blow up the country that's his own country because he never got taught the reality that this is his country. You follow that? When they arrested that blind Sheik, I didn't know why he was mad. I can understand his law made him blind, so he's mad at everybody. Ain't our fault. He's, uh, he just had the wrong deity. So now he's blind. And he's going to blow up the World Trade Center. And who was with him? When they arrested him, a bunch of Negro Sunni Muslims. How do we know what side they're on? Now Farrakhan has a whole congregation of angry American blacks. Because he can't get a good million dollars out of his million-man march. Now he's surrendering over 
all these human beings to this communist movement. There's the danger. You got your attention in the wrong places. You better look at what's taking place right up under your nose. They're making our Arab army in our country. And the fool Arabs are not succeeding because they're stupid. You only have to live with them and you know how stupid they are. I went to school in Egypt. They real them. Well, they got to use you from the inside and get you hyped up on some silly belief. I know and you know why Farrakhan is punking out. Well, it didn't knock the nigga out. He can't deal with those books. Islam is the devil's religion. They, instead of calling it Deen Allah, they should be calling it Deen Shaitan. Because Allah would not promote killing children. Allah merely can say, Kun fire kun and stop things. They don't have to send out vigilante men to kill other men. They don't have to send out people to blow up buildings. A bunch of fools got busted in New York, getting ready to blow up two of them. Shut up. Where was the law? You understand? This is what it breeds. It's a tool of the devil. Farrakhan and these guys are working with an undergovernment here. These people don't even know they're, they're Native Americans. They say they're Asiatic black men. And when you look at any of the followers of the Nation of Islam, you do not see an Asiatic black man. A Malaysian is an Asiatic black man. You understand? People in Fuji are Asiatic black men. Elijah Muhammad, to look at him, you see an Asian and you see a black man. So the man that was talking to him from Portland, Oregon, the Caucasian, he was saying, you are an Asiatic black man. This does not apply to everybody standing there because you ain't going to tell me this brother with all these lips and his nose is an Asiatic black man. But if they can keep you under a belief system, Christianity keeps you under a belief system. They keep you not wanting to investigate. And if somebody like me comes along, I got to be a troublemaker because my, my motto is don't believe me, check it out. Everything I say, go investigate it, find out if it's true. And everything I print, I back it up with documents. And I ask that every other preacher or imam or teacher or rabbi do the same thing because you got my soul in your hands. You got the last and most precious thing I got left. My body has been beat up. My manhood has been tinted. It then took away the power for me to think for myself. Now all I got left is my essence. And now you want that. Can't have it. Can't have it. You understand? I work for you, you abuse me. Right down here now you walk to places and people got the nerve to have an attitude and got a whole back room full of black employers. That if they left today, that fool would go out of business because he couldn't do the manual labor himself. Half of them don't even know how to do the labor. You drive down the road, you see guys on the road under the sun working and the boss is sitting up in a truck. He couldn't stand the sun. You understand? So now we come south, you go north. We're coming back to where we're from, you go back to where you're from. And we can't get along. And we're not having a problem, you are. I don't have a problem walking up to anybody of any race and sitting down and having a cup of tea with them. I don't have the problem, you have the problem. I don't care who lives next to me. You got that problem. And I know what it's about. It was about the inevitable, tumbling jeans. Tumbling jeans can be pretty frightening. I know what you're suffering from. I know why Hitler was so mad, because Hitler was a nigga. You understand? Hitler had brown hair and brown eyes. He was a nigga. You with me? Want me to go a step further? If you, if you don't have, if you do not have blonde hair and blue eyes, you're not a white man. If you did not, if you were not born in the Caucasus Mountains between the Caspian and Black Sea, you're not a Caucasian. 
You with me? You have to be Scandinavian to be white. Blonde hair, blue eyes. You can be a Euro-American. All right? That means you can be Euro-American. You can have blonde hair and blue eyes and have been a third or fourth generation American, so you became a Euro-American, American from Europe. But if you want to be classified white, you must have blonde hair and blue eyes. If you don't, if you have brown hair or red hair or hazel or, or auburn or black, then you are a mulatto. You understand? Because your historians only recorded three races. They recorded the Negroid race, the Mongoloid race, and the Caucasoid race. So if you're white and you wasn't born in the Caucasus mountain, then you're a Negro. How you doing, brother? And you gotta realize that. But when you're dealing with people who are white skinned with black hair and brown eyes, they know it. And if the first people to mix in with the Orientals had been Caucasians with blonde hair and blue eyes, then Orientals, you see some with blonde hair. Have you ever seen any Orientals with blonde hair who didn't bleach it? Have you seen any Orientals with blue eyes without contacts? So they too had to have mixed in with the original people of the planet. Black. It ain't no, it ain't no myth no more about who was first on the planet. That's a scientific. That's, I mean, they have proven that beyond a shadow of doubt. But now we got to convey a new message to eliminate another level of racism. You understand? That new message is, blonde hair, blue-eyed people have never done anything to us as black people. Have you checked your history from the last three or four classes that I mentioned it? John Hawkins didn't have blonde hair, blue eyes. You understand that? What's the other one's name? Prince Henry did not have blonde hair. All these people were Portuguese. The French. You understand? They were not Scandinavians. Blonde hair, blue eyed people have done absolutely nothing to us at all. Maybe some of the ones here who got brainwashed by, uh, just like we have, and, and became racist. But when you get back into your own studies of the world, you will not find any place. So when you get around to people like Farrakhan calling all blonde hair, blue eyed people devils, that's the devil at work doing that. That's causing a form of racism and hate and separation. That's the devil. You with me? Now, when I walk up to anybody without blonde hair, blue eyes, and they call me a nigga, I say, welcome, brother. Because your parents didn't tell you that if I shake your tree, Ben York will fall out. <laughs> Old nigga will fall out and start shuffling. <laughs> when you meet an Irishman named Mac, he has to be informed that Mac is short for more. So Mac Bay, Mac Dougal, Mac Donalds, <laughs> Mac Douglas is my brother. When you see somebody with red hair, green eyes, like Sicily Space with freckles, then freckles are parted Negroes. If you squeeze those freckles, if you squeeze those freckles together, she would Sicily Space would be as black as me. She's running from the reality. But a lot of, of our people run from the reality. There's a whole lot of niggas out there pretending they're not niggas. We see them on television, they ain't fooling us. We be saying, she think we don't know. That's the approach towards racism. Not just, oh, let's all get along, because that's hard to accept. That's real difficult for me to just push it aside with all the stuff I've been through. That's kind of touchy. But reality is what's going to happen when, just imagine if Hitler himself was sitting in a room with all blonde hair, blue eyed people. Guess what he'd be? Guess who's coming to dinner? He would be the nigger. Do you understand? This is what they managed to do amongst you to make dumb people like Spike Lee write movies like Jungle Feet. She's Gotta Have It and School Days where they try to imply wannabes. Caucasians have wannabes also. If you walk up to the average Caucasian man and ask him to give you his description of a beautiful woman, he'll say a beautiful blonde and his wife could be a brunette. And the same thing happens in a black family. 
The moment a child is born with wavy hair, they say, wow, that child got good hair. Got light eyes, boy, them are some beautiful eyes. Everybody. So now it's about time to set the record straight. And if everybody want to sit down and talk and get real, we'll forget about the, the dictionaries and the encyclopedias that you wrote and the definitionaries and we'll just go for what we see. You follow what I'm saying? Go for what we see and you'll find that 90% of the people on the planet are brothers and sisters now. The amount of people that are the extreme are not the problem. Then The people in Scandinavia are not intimidated by niggers. And the people in the bush of Cuba, in Uganda and Africa, are not intimidated by Caucasians. They accept them as human beings. It's only people who are walking around unsure about what to do genetically that have all the racial problems. All of the leaders are always, go back to the 60s. Name some of the black leaders in the 60s. You go back to the 60s, and most of the people in the 60s that was running the Black Panthers, white skin, Angela Davis, Huey B. Newton, Farrakhan, Elijah Mom, they're the ones with the problem because they know they got white blood and it's bothering them. You're bothering when you go to you go to a clan meeting and the grand wizard, the grand wizard don't have blonde. You look up in Boston, he don't have blonde hair and blue eyes. And he's talking all this Anglo-Saxon stuff in Aryan, say Aryan is Indian. The word Aryan, the swat sticker is a Hindu symbol. Aryan means Indian. What are you talking about? You're not Aryans. If they don't, but they don't want you to be informed because if you get informed, then you'll break down the racial problem. And human beings might start to get along. You follow? And there's an elite population of people who base everything on money and they can't have people getting along. Because racism is profitable. There's a market for, for black people and there's a market for white people. There's a market for Orientals and there's a market for Chinese, I mean for uh, Latinos. There's a market for it. You understand? That market is as prevalent as big clothes is a market. I told you all about, I said them big clothes, they can't keep them in because they're losing money. They ain't selling small, medium, large, and extra large. They're selling one size clothes and that's not economical. Laces cost too. So children take the laces out their shoes, they lose money. It's business. Big business. It ain't concerned about health. It ain't concerned about welfare. There's no concern about old people. It's business. I'm going to tell you the truth. You know what I'm saying? There's a whole program going on. And meanwhile, back to our brother Farrakhan, this fool is getting involved. When America is getting out of involved with these people, now we're starting to send our people over there to be destroyed, to get involved. Don't be salam alaikum and me. <laughs> what has Gaddafi ever done for you? Where was Gaddafi in the 60s when y'all were supposed to be having a revolution? Libya, Lib Lib right? In his country, what he, no, he's not, that ain't even his country because Gaddafi's an Italian. The real Libyans, that's not, he's not, he's not one of them. But he's pretending he's Libyan for the time being. What, but what did he do for me and you? So what do I need him for now that I'm learning how to walk? What do I need with him now that I've found out the, the truth for myself? I don't need him. So don't be trying to lead me into no flock of followers to follow another image of another man. Now I'm following some Arabian. And for another 2,000 years, I'm just shaking the Jesus thing. I'm just getting over the hippie image of Jesus. My grandmother's image on a wall stamped in my mind, everybody's mind right in this room. When I say, Jesus! Oh, sweet Jesus! All of y'all see a picture on your grandmother's wall with somebody doing this, on him, standing down in front of a rock, he got oh, dark brown hair and light eyes, and he's looking up at the sky like him and God are friends or, or relatives. And that's been stamped into your soul, man. And if that is the Son of God, right, then what are you? And what are you? Everybody talks about Michelangelo. What about Leonardo or Da Vinci or probably something like Lennon Johnson or something? He's responsible for drawing that Last Supper picture and deciding what all the disciples look like. That's racism. 
And when they put that thought in your mind, they make you hate yourself. Because if God looked like that, then I got to be the devil. And you really think it's fair for me to teach my son? I'm a whole of a picture of other than myself. And if I do hold up a picture of myself, you call it racism, and I ask you when you did it, what was it? You don't, do, you don't have an answer? It's wrong when I tell my son it's all right to be black. Not to turn black, that's, that's wrong, you know what I mean? That's wrong when I do it. I'm a racist, I'm anti-American, I'm a problem, I'm a troublemaker. But it's all right for you to push pictures like what uh, Michelangelo did. And, and right now, every person in this room got a picture of Jesus Christ in their mind as a what? No, a hippie, not a Caucasian. The picture is a, is a hippie. Because if Jesus Christ walked into Edenton right now, the picture they have, he would, they would think he's a hippie and they'd arrest him. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Now, let Jesus come to earth now and see what happened to him by those pictures. They got to go. So you ask people, I've had people ask me, why do you put pictures of everybody in your book? You know how dumb that sounds to me? But do you, you find in my books all black people? No. According to the tribe you are, that's what we put in the book. That's white people, all we have to be covered. That's what's on the planet. But don't try to make me think God is white and then say he's a spirit. How do you determine that a spirit is white? Don't say he's a formless without form. He's a formless in form. What the hell does that mean? I have enough damn followers with English without the formless in form. The Muslims say he's the unseen God who Moses saw on the mountain. Jesus was born to die but got in the garden and said, if it's possible, let this cup pass by me. I don't want to die, in other words. How can I live well? This is, this is what's called confusion. This is the state of mind that produces the children. They go out there and do what? Drive-by shootings. If you can't see that that's a problem, that America is getting a problem because the preacher has failed, that the school teachers have failed the kids, you follow what I'm saying? I'm basically saying to them, leave us the hell alone. We ain't here to do anything to you. All we want you to do is leave us alone. Because all the stuff that we go to you for, you slap us in the face with. I'm not, I'm tired of the inferiority complex. I don't have to be. I can build. You know what I'm saying? When you look out here, I'm doing my own thing. Why don't, listen to me. Anybody that walks up to you and says, what are y'all doing out there? It's not worth talking to. Because anybody who walk by and, and see these experiments and don't know that this is e something to do with Egypt, they really got the problem. I don't know what them folks is doing out there. And you're wasting your time having a dialogue with them. Say, I understand why you don't see what's going on out there. I can see that. You just walk on away. Yes. Right. That's a subtle brainwashing. Right. She said, I'm a Moor, and I don't believe... I don't believe Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow. I just don't believe women give birth to lambs. If I'm saying I'm not a Christian and I don't believe that, and I don't, my mother don't want me to be taught it. That's all. Keep it. Wow.